So a little bit about Pink, um, the speaker, um, former Black Badge winner uh, through uh, Capture the Packet. And uh, he's going to talk about, you know, something, something hard to reach places. Uh, it's bound to be a good one. Not much, without much ado, Silas Cutler, Pink. Hey, up, oh, whoa. All right, so, um, hey, uh, formerly this was sniffing the hard to reach places. Uh, however, we changed it slightly to uh, burning the lookout. So, um, I don't just go by pink, my name is Silas Cutler. Uh, I'm a senior security researcher for CrowdStrike. Um, I also run two projects that folks know me for, uh, one of which is Malshare, which is a um, site similar to VirusTotal. We offer free malware samples. Uh, and a internet scanning project called 25499. Um, depending on if you're a vendor and you ask who I, or what level I'm at, uh, I'm an intern because, yeah. Um, contact information, feel free to reach out afterwards um, if I don't or un am unable to answer any questions you have. So, um, this talk, we're gonna, in this talk, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some lawful intercept. Uh, just at a quick show of hands, how many people are familiar with what law, uh, lawful intercept entails? All right. So, uh, a lot of fresh faces. So, uh, what we're going to talk about is very commonly known as wiretapping. And this is how they do it at the uh, ISP and carrier level. So I'm going to let you know very upfront, I am not an expert in lawful intercept. Uh, I'm a security researcher. I follow breadcrumbs from one place to another. Uh, through it, I've learned about lawful intercept while researching this system. So lawful intercept, in the very formal definition, provides law enforcement the tools and access they need in order to conduct investigations. So if they have a suspect, they can work with an I ISPs, will provide them the ability to capture the things they need to for their case. Um, there's two really important um, laws and standards that are, are the sort of framework for how this works. The first is CALEA, which is the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. Um, I've also seen it called the Computer Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, but uh, that's the other one. And then the other is uh, SD, which is the European Telecommunications uh, Standard Institute. And they sort of define, here's what the protocols are that hardware needs to speak and um, what data should be collected. Cisco has some amazing documentation for their routers and switches on doing this. Um, and so basically, uh, users, uh, or, or excuse me, ISPs will provide through their infrastructure um, the ability for law enforcement to place taps on people. Uh, with that, it's also access to things like subscriber information so that they don't have to say, this IP address I want to tap, it's I want to tap Silas Cutler's phone like, that's the name, their system will look up my subscriber information and any IP address or phone number I'm calling from, they'll be able to tap without a problem. So these systems usually are comprised of three different components. The intercept access point, um, usually the switch or wherever my traffic is passing through. The mediation device, which is something we're going to talk a little about in a few minutes. And um, what's called the lawful intercept administration, which... Um, controls subscriber information and verifies that they can place taps when they need. So, um, this whole story started a few years ago on what is probably on my favorite site on the internet, Pastebin. Um, I've been scraping Pastebin now with a 99.99% capture rate uh, for about eight years. Um, I have keywords set up, so if you post something with uh, any of the sort of keywords I'm watching for, I'll get an email alert. Uh, and it's really important because in the days when Anonymous was heavily active, they were sharing configuration scripts, and so I was able to watch all of those. Uh, in 2015, I was, research, or was doing some work for um, on an Iranian and Middle Eastern cyber group, so I had a keyword set up for, some, or for cyber army, which triggered on this really unusual paste. This paste was somebody who had claimed to have hacked the Brazilian army after they had done a capture the flag event. And I know what you might be thinking, which is how does this relate to lawful intercept? 
but we're going to get there in a second. Um, so in this paste, they'd included three addresses that they claimed to have hacked. And it was a very tongue-in-cheek post saying, if you like to play, you guys like to play hackers, but we're going to sort of show you our skills. Um, so I was curious and decided to check out and see what one of those sites looked like, which I assume you're all curious about as well. So I fired up Tor browser and was presented with this, an invalid SSL certificate because it expired. But what it then took me to was this, which is the login panel for one of these mediation devices uh, for something called VGIA, the VGIA Interception Achievement Suite. And um, so this is one of those systems that law enforcement use to log in and place taps or view the records from somebody they've tapped. Um, and this made me really uncomfortable, as it should all of you, because I was able to publicly access this system, which it shouldn't be. Uh, since its release, they've actually done their updates, um, but again, haven't updated their, updated their SSL certificates, which are expired. So I dug a little more. And I found that VGIA is actually developed by a company out of Buenos Aires, SunTech. Um, in this interface, and they have a lot of information on their site about how uh, with their product, they can assist law enforcement in fulfilling all of the needs they have for an investigation. Now, I'm not here to sway one way or another on things like surveillance and lawful intercept, but I was concerned because all three of these systems were VGIA mediation devices, which shouldn't be publicly accessible. So I started digging further to try and find out how many of these are out there. Where are they? How many other places could I find one of these mediation devices? Um, so I'm a huge fan of Census. The guys at University of Michigan have done amazing work, and it's a really awesome tool. So I started from those three sites trying to collect any sort of static elements that I could find. Um, so looking at things like the SSL certificate, uh, I noticed the common name was vgia.vivo.com.br, and Vivo is a pretty important telecom provider, um, which they very directly identify uh, as part of their DNS name also, which that resolves also to that intercept point. So through SSL information, through DNS information, I was able to start searching and hunting for more of these. Um, as I was also looking, I found things like passive DNS, which indicated all of these systems started having common things. So the DNS names were VGA dot something. The SSL inf information had either SunTech or VGA to identify what it was. And so this started to become a pattern where there was a pretty easy way to spot these. And then this was all for naught, because on the uh, the civil police of the state of Santa Catarina, uh, they actually listed three of the systems in their uh, bookmarks tab for everyone. So these were very directly being used by law enforcement. Um, I've actually redacted part of the uh, session ID, which they left in the shortcut. Um, come on, guys. Uh, so map it all out. With the six that I had conclusively found, um, I was really hoping to see them all over the world, but instead there's a really nice little cluster. And uh, my geography of Brazil is a little, or of South America is a little rough, so I had to zoom in. And it was very clear that all six of these were in Brazil. Uh, and I was able to map them to their, some of their largest telecom providers. So each of these providers is providing law enforcement, or law enforcement uh, wiretap ability through these VGA systems. So police in these areas, hopefully police, can go in and place taps, view wiretap logs, and collect information on suspects. Um, hopefully law enforcement. So why this matters. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the Olympics in Greece from a few, 2004, 2005? I know it's not really a specific thing, 
but it was a few years ago because what ended up happening was uh, there was a pretty severe diplomatic and international incident because someone had uh, broken into the Ericsson switches used by Vodafone in Greece and placed taps on state officials. I think the prime minister was also included where their phones were tapped during the Olympics. Uh, so pretty important time politically and culturally uh, where some third party had been listening to all of their calls and reporting all of their data. So the actual perpetrators behind this aren't known. Um, it was suspected being a country that we all are maybe standing in. Uh, and they'd actually, the switches themselves, the Ericsson switches, originally didn't have the lawful intercept feature installed, so someone actually installed it on it because it doesn't always come by default with the switches and things. Um, it was also called the Greek Watergate incident. So, right now, these systems are out there. They are poorly set up with, for OPSEC, so they are being targeted by people because the post from Pastebin was a hacktivist group that said that this was a um, target of theirs and they had broken into it already. So there's hacktivists targeting these, there's governments targeting these, um, and there's also the very significant potential for cyber criminals to target these because uh, if you can control someone's traffic, you can collect a lot of really sensitive information which can be exploited for financial gain through online banking, online shopping. So there's a significant risk that is being placed on the people where these systems are deployed. And one of the other points to make about it as well is this is likely not the only setup like this out there. There's likely other vendors that have weak and vulnerable um, lawful intercept mediation devices that could be attacked by third parties. And as a community, I think we need to hold the vendors and the developers of these to a higher level of standard, where things like two-factor authentication, valid certificates, and not being publicly accessible is a requirement and not just a hope or want. Um, and so, as a final point to it as well, is as of last night at about 11 p.m., uh, that's the population of Brazil. So all of those people are technically at risk of having their traffic and their communications intercepted because these devices are vulnerable. So I like the 20 minute talks because they're very quick and to the point. So, questions? Anything I can explain more? Yes? So Any type of this access, excuse me? Domestically. Domestically. I have not. But uh, CALEA was written uh, for the U.S. There are telecom standards in the U.S. that require these same systems. And there's actually been some phenomenal research from, I think it was FX of Phono Elite and Tom, I want to say Cross from IBM X-Force in 2010 where they talk about um, some of these systems at least deployed in the U.S. and in Europe. Uh, but more at the uh, intercept gateway or the intercept access point where the actual switch has the ability to receive tap information and to send that information. So they are here in the US as well for law enforcement. However, the deployment of the mediation devices, I'm not sure about. Anything else? Awesome. Well, thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and or contact me on Twitter.